How's it going, Toons the World? It is your pal Mega Snoop bringing you another Toontastic video. And in today's video, I wanted to give you a little bit of advice. I don't want it to ever seem like in any video I'm telling you how to play the game. I'm just letting you know my opinion on how the best way to get through it is. And today is no exception, because today I want to teach you the best way to train your gags. Now I'll actually go through each individual gag showing you how to train each one because there are different methods and ways for each one. But before I even get to that, I want to give a couple tips just for general gag training. And the first one is when you first get a gag, doesn't matter what it is, you just earned sound, you just earned lure, you just earned drop, and you want to get it past that level 1 stage, here's what you can do. Go to any district that has an invasion, and I mean any district. Short change, big wig, downsizer, doesn't matter. Go to that district. Once you go to that district, open up your district page again and go to Welcome Valley. Welcome Valley is only Toontown Central. And in this Welcome Valley, it'll only have regular cogs. But because technically Welcome Valley is a sub-district of whatever district you're in, if you are in an invasion district, then the sub-district of Welcome Valley will still give you the double experience for the invasion. Long story short, take your level 1 gags, go to an invasion district, go to Welcome Valley, go on the street, you will see regular level 1, 2, and 3 cogs as if it was normal Toontown Central, but they will still give you double XP for it. This is a great way to train your brand new gags and at least get them past that dreadful level 1 stage. And secondly, I wanted to give a generalization of how to train any gag. The most efficient way is to go to an invasion district of a lower level cog, preferably usually the level 1, 2, or 3 tier, meaning short change, penny pincher, tight wad, things of that nature. And you're going to want to go to either the Berg on Polar Place or anywhere in Donald's Dreamland and search for five-story buildings. Four-story buildings work as well, but they're not quite as efficient. So you can do a four-story building, but it's in your best interest to find a five-story. Buildings typically have gag multipliers in them already. With the invasion, it doubles all the gag multipliers, which means on each floor, you will get double what you would have. On the fifth floor of a five-story building, during an invasion, you will get times six XP. But also keep in mind that when you're going up this building, to save your most powerful gags for the last floor. This isn't because the cogs on the highest floor are going to be harder, especially during an invasion where most of them are going to be about the same level anyway. This is because you will maximize the potential amount of experience you get by using the gags that give you the most experience on the highest multiplier floor. Now that I got the generalizations out of the way, let's actually break down how to train each specific gag. Here you can skip through the video and look specifically for the gag you're trying to train and hopefully that'll help you out. I'm just going to go down the gag tracks. So the first one is Tuna. Now this method works best if you have a friend going with you. The most efficient way you can train tune-up is by doing what I mentioned earlier, is going to an invasion district and doing a five-story building. However, when you do this, there's a specific way that you can maximize the potential tune-up you get. Basically, battle your way through the building as if it was a regular building. But once you get to the top floor, leave one or two cogs remaining. Do not destroy them and then pass. Let yourself get hit, let your friend get hit, and then on the next turn, tune each other up, and then get hit again, and then tune each other up, and then get hit again. And repeat this process until you either run out of tune up or you hit the max 300 experience that you can get for the building. Now if you don't get hit, don't attack it, just pass. Now let's say you don't get hit by the cog, just don't attack it and pass. Wait till you do get hit. Simple as that. By doing this, although it is boring, you can almost guarantee that you get 300 tune-up experience each building. Next is Trap. The best thing you can do when you're training Trap is to find someone else who is training Lure and work with them. Again, invasion districts and buildings are your best option. And this definitely helps when you're helping somebody train Lure because of the fact that Trap gives extra accuracy to Lure gags. So find four or five story buildings in an invasion district, bring a friend, and start using those gags on the cogs. And remember to use your highest levels on the highest floor and your lower levels on all the prior floors. Now is Lure. Lure is a bit tricky. At the beginning it has incredibly low accuracy and makes it not very fun at all. This is where you want to use the first tip I gave you. When you have level 1 and 2 Lure, you're going to want to use the Welcome Valley glitch to at least get it trained some of the way up and at least get it to level 3 or 4. And there's a reason for this. 
It's because your level 1 lure works best against level 1 cogs, and your level 2 lure works best against level 2 cogs. It is in your best interest to use the lures against the levels in which they correlate with. Instead of trying to use a level 1 lure on a level 10 cog, it's probably not going to work, guys. So, just trust me on this one. You're going to save yourself a whole lot of headaches by doing it this way. So here I have a little chart of which level gag you should use against which level cogs. The level 1 gag for level 1 cogs, level 2 for level 2, the level 3 lure works pretty well against level 3 to 4 cogs, and then once you get to the level 4 lure, it works well enough where you can start using it on level 4 to 8 cogs. And then once you get to the level 5 lure, that one basically works for just about any cog that you come across. So at this point, bringing it to invasion buildings and working it there is absolutely a great option. Another tip, because double lure is a myth, you can actually train your lure with a friend. Let's say your friend has hypno goggles and you still have red magnet. If your friend allows it, feel free to use your red magnet with their hypno goggles to get some free experience points. And now let's move to sound. Sound, once again, you can train in invasion districts and five story buildings, and that'll do you pretty well. Now, the biggest pain of sound is trying to train it from the elephant trunk to the foghorn, and everybody knows the pain of this. That's 5,000 experience points between the two, which is the most experience points between any two gags in all of Toontown. It is pretty annoying. There's a couple things you can do though. Like I mentioned before, buildings and invasion districts, always a great option. The second one is factories. Factories do give you a times two XP and it is a great way for you to work your sound. Now let's say that you do have trunk. Let me just lay out the most ideal way to run through a factory when you have trunk. So everybody should know that when you're doing a lawn factory, there's a sound restock in the lava room. What you're going to want to do is bring three trunks and a kajillion of woogas. And make sure to use all three of your trunks before you get to the lava room. That way when you get to the lava room, you restock on all your trunks and you can use three more trunks. This will maximize the amount of experience you get from all of your sound throughout the factory. And by doing this, you will get at least 100 sound points each factory you do. You boil it down, that's 50 factories you're going to have to do from getting Elephant Trunk to Foghorn, but you don't only have to do factories. They're just a nice little in-between thing to get a free 100 experience points. Alright, now let's move to throw. It, it's, it's throw, guys. Like, if you're not training your throw, I don't... How, how, how do you even not know how to train? You just use it! It's throw, guys! But for real, five-story buildings and invasion districts. Four stories work as well. It's not that big of a deal. Invasion districts, please. Now let's move on to squirt. It's just like throw! Yes, squirt is a little bit harder to use because of the fact that most people use throw, and throw will go first, and throw usually destroys it. But if you can at least collaborate with your teammates, or if you're by yourself, just using squirt basically is easy to train as throw, because of the sense that it's the basic attack gag. So once again, four or five story buildings in invasion districts are your best bet. Lastly, let's talk about drop. Yes, drop. One of the worst things to train in the history of training ever. I know. But here's a tip. Drop is very similar to lure because of the fact that it has the low accuracy. So what you're going to want to do when you first get drop is again, go to the Welcome Valley glitch. Get the double experience going off of level 1 and 2 cogs and train your drop up to level 3. Once you're at level 3, you can start using it on level 3 or 4 cogs. Level 4 can use against level 4 or 5 cogs. Level 5 has a decent accuracy against 5 to 7 cogs. And the piano basically has pretty good accuracy on all cogs. So when you are in invasion districts training these, keep these levels in mind. Because using a level 3 drop on a level 7 doesn't have the best accuracy and you're just wasting time instead of getting an experience that you could be doing by training over in that short change invasion over in Graphite Gulch over there. But for real. What really helps with drop is training it with someone else who is using another gag. That way they can stun the cog for you. Find someone who's training sound, throw, or squirt. Work together, have them attack, and you drop. That way you're both gaining experience, both defeating cogs, and both working your way towards a new gag. But those are the tips that I got. If you guys got anything, by all means, please do leave a comment, help each other out, and let me know what you think of this video. My name is Mega Snoop. I appreciate you guys stopping by today, and I hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you next time. 
I hope you all enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to smash that like button. It helps me know that my work is appreciated. Leave a comment and subscribe if you're new. You can check out my live stream at twitch.tv forward slash Megasnoop. Follow me on Twitter at Megasnoopttr, and I hope you all have a toontastic day.